What's up, everybody? It's Dave here from Profitable Tools. Now, a couple of days ago, I released a video on Fluent Forms. It's my favorite WordPress form builder. I talked about why I liked it so much, but there were two features that were more complex, and I said they'd require a dedicated video. Well, a ton of people commented that I should make that video, so guess what? That's what this is. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here's my WordPress demo site. Now, I will say right out of the gates, you're going to need the pro version of Fluent Forms to do everything I'm doing because these are specifically pro features. I'll have the link in the description. Of course, that'll be the referral link for the channel. All right, so here we go. We got user registration turned on and post creation turned on as well. To get to this screen, you're going to go to Fluent Forms, Modules, and then you can find these three uh, WordPress core modules right here by clicking this tab. So get at least these two turned on. We're not going to discuss landing pages, but I did mention that in the review posted a few days ago. So I'll link to that down below if you're interested in checking out the landing pages. Super cool feature. All right, so let's get into it. What we're going to do is create create a post creation, but you know what? I could just show you that feature, but it wouldn't really emphasize the coolness factor of what you can do. Now, coolness with like a big pair of nerd glasses on. So what we're actually gonna do is install a couple of other free plugins first, and then we can really utilize this functionality. So to the WordPress repository, we go plugins, add new. First one we're gonna do is custom post types. And I like this one right here, it's custom post type UI from Web Dev Studios, let's install this. Now what a custom post type is gonna do is allow you to have a separate category of posts. So right now, we just have all of our posts going into the post category, and this would be like your blog post, right? But when we create a custom post type, we could have a post type for anything we want. I'm gonna set up a custom post type for reviews. So let's go down to custom post type UI, add a post type, I'll call it reviews give it the plural label of reviews and the singular label of review. Down here, what has additional labels, I like to just call this review with a capital R, but that's more OCD. If I don't do that, you can see it defaults down here to a lowercase r, and it'll show up on the left-hand sidebar with that lowercase r, whereas everything else has a capitalized first letter. I'm also going to do uh, a few of these other fields. You're basically just gonna fill in the placeholder text followed by the custom post type name. So in this case, I'll do all reviews add review. All right, you definitely don't need to fill in all these. I like to just do the first few because they're the ones I actually tend to use. All right, then let's hit add post type. All right, so I've got this custom post type set up over here called review. Now, what's this going to do for us right now? Absolutely nothing. But my end goal is to have a custom post type so that users could submit user reviews of software deals. Sound familiar? All right, let's head back to the WordPress repository and add a new plugin. Plugins, add new. This time we're gonna add custom fields in. Advanced custom fields is what you want. If you have the pro version, go ahead and install that, but we don't really need any of their features right now. I'm just gonna do the free one and activate. Now we'll go down to the bottom here where it says custom fields and do a new field group. We'll hit add new. I'm gonna call this user review fields. Then I'll add a new field right here. And I'll call this the rating. For now, that's all I really want is the rating. Uh, you don't need to do anything else. I'm gonna make this a number and I'll set a minimum value to one and a maximum value to 10. Before you leave advanced custom fields, make sure you change the post type to display this field group to your newly set up post type, which is review. All right, there it is. Let's go ahead and update this. Great, now we're all set. All right, if you're confused so far, just hang with me. This will all come together shortly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a form over in Fluent Forms Pro. Now over in Fluent Forms Pro, what you're gonna do is add a new form, but be careful, you don't actually wanna click this add a new form button. That would be too obvious. What we wanna do is hit this little uh, downward face carrot right here and we're going to choose create post form because we're creating a form that can be turned into a post and let's go ahead and choose which post type we'd like to use and lo and behold we could choose a post or a page the normal WordPress post types but we have our new custom post type showing up here reviews let's choose that and hit continue all right, it pops me into a blank form over in Fluent Forms. Now, I can't use any of the templates, but that's okay. I'm gonna start from scratch on this one. So remember, I'm seeking to have users submit reviews on my site. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is ask for the name of the person leaving the review. So let's grab this name field over here under General Fields, and we'll drag it over as the first field in our form. I'll go ahead and click this button here to edit it and let's go ahead and say your name. I'm actually gonna turn off the last name functionality here. I don't really need that. And because I want them to also have an account on my website, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for their email address next. 
there's an email address widget over here. I'll just go ahead and drag this underneath the first name. Now I want the user review to have a headline so it's really obvious and eye-catching whether I want to read the review or not. So to do this, I'm actually gonna go up to here where it says post fields and drag in the post title as the headline. Now what I'm gonna do is actually change this text. Instead of saying post title, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to your review headline. All right, remember we created that custom field for a rating. Let's go ahead and add that into our form. Let's do that as just a general field down here and we'll do a number. I'll set the same minimum and maximum value that I did when I created the post type and let's give this a good label. And finally, we want them to leave a full length review. So let's go over here to post fields and we'll make that the post content. And I'll put that right underneath the score field. Now let's go ahead and give this a name as well. Your review. All right, this is all looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and save this form. Now, in order to get this all set up, we actually have to map these fields to different fields in the post. So let's go over here to where it says settings and integrations, and let's go down to post creation. We'll add a new post feed, and I'll call this user review submission. Now, notice I have the ability to set a submission as published right away, as in draft mode, as in pending or private. So if you wanted to go through and screen reviews before they go live, you know, certain places like to do that. So you'd be able to do that right here. All right, down here, we can do our post fields mapping. We can do a post title. I'm gonna map that to, of course, our field called your review headline. Post content, I'm going to map that to your review. And post excerpt, I'm going to map that to your review as well. All right, so down here, we have the ability to map advanced custom fields to Fluent Form. So remember at the beginning of the video, I installed advanced custom fields. I didn't really tell you much about what we were doing. I just set up one custom field called user rating. Now, the idea is that when someone fills out a Fluent Form to review some software, they could give that software a score so you can get an idea of how much they liked it. It could be a scale of one to five stars. It could be thumbs up, thumbs down. You get the point. However you decide you want to do your ratings, I do a scale of one through 10. So a user fills out that form. It maps to a custom field inside of a post, which is our custom post type, too complex. And then that custom post type can display on the front end so that users can see it. So this is a lot of trickery going on, a lot of complexity that you normally need to be a developer in order to set this all up. With just a few simple and mostly free plugins, we're able to do some really cool stuff without any code at all. So down here where it says advanced custom field, I'm gonna choose rating. And then for my form field, I'm gonna choose your score from one to 10. All right, let's save this. Now we're almost done. The last thing we have to do is actually set up the user creation. So to do this, we're gonna go to marketing and CRM integrations. We'll add a new integration, and the only one I've turned on right now is the user registration integration. Let's give this thing a name. We'll call it user review submission. Now we just have to map our fields. So the only one that's required is the email address. Of course, I added that to my form and it shows up right here. You could add in the first name as well. I'm going to do that. I think that makes a lot of sense. That's the author name. For last name, I didn't request one. You certainly could if you want. And for password, I'm going to leave that blank and just have the password emailed to them. Down here, this is a very important section. This is what type of user there will be once their form is submitted. By default, it chooses subscriber. That is a very safe choice. If you're confused about user role, I do have a dedicated video to WordPress user roles. For now, I'm gonna leave it as subscriber and I recommend you do unless you know uh, what you're doing, you know better otherwise. Then down here, I'm gonna turn on auto login and email notifications so that they get an email to notify them. They have to set up their password in order to be able to edit and view their posts. All right, let's create this user registration feed. All right, we're all set up. We got our form completed, but how do we test it and make sure that everything is working properly? Well, I'm inside of Elementor here. I'm gonna be using Elementor Pro for most of the rest of this video. And if you don't have that already, you will need it to do some of the more advanced features I'm gonna show you. So you can grab that in the link below. That'll be the referral link for this channel. All right, so I'm looking at my page set up with just a single uh, video embedded. This is the Fluent Forms review from earlier last week. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new section here just to kind of uh, separate things right now and here's my new section let's go ahead and add in our form for user review submissions on the left hand sidebar I'm just gonna type in fluent so I can find it quickly there is a fluent form widget for Elementor if you were not aware of that you can drop that in right here and then I'm gonna select the form I don't think I gave this a name it's just post form 9 yep here it is 
Maybe I'll add a headline in here to make it clear what this is. All right, there we go. We got a headline added in. Now I'll admit that I've given no effort to the style of this form or this page. So, you know, if you want this to look good on the front end, definitely spend a little time working on design. I'm focused on functionality right now. So we've got this form all set up. And if I go ahead and fill it out, it should create both a new user as well as a new post. So let's try that. And then we'll figure out how to display the posts on the front end so that people can actually read user reviews, which is, I assume, something that you'd want to do. All right, so here's our page with the form on it. I've opened it up in an incognito window so that I'm not logged in when I fill out the form. Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, I've got the form filled in. Now when I hit this submit button, I should have two things happen. I should have a user review created as a custom post in the back end, and I should also have a new user created with the email address mail at daveswift.com. Let's see if that works. All right, now I did get this thank you message saying that we'll get in touch with you shortly. I probably want to update that, but uh, for now that is just fine. I'd be easy to do in the back end of Fluent Forms. All right, let's go ahead and check that functionality. I'm in the back end here. Let's go over to reviews. And there we go, here is our new post. Let's go ahead and check on it. Let's edit this. Here is the content, the title is the correct headline, and my rating is displaying down here correctly. All right, great. So the next thing we wanna do is get that displaying on the front end so users can read it, but let's go ahead and check and see if my user account was created as well. Let's go under users, all users. And sure enough, here we go. I've got my new user account set up. So if I want to check that email address, I should have an email as to how to create my WordPress password. Now, there are two likely ways that people are going to want to display the posts created by their users right on the same page that they created the post, as in this case where you're generating reviews, or you might want to have a dedicated post page created for it. So I'm going to show you how to do both right now. Let's go ahead and edit this page with Elementor. Then let's scroll down below our form here. That's just where I'm choosing to do it. I'm gonna search for the post widget. Let's go ahead and drag this in. And now here I can see a list of all of the recent WordPress posts, but I don't want those. I simply want to have posts that were user generated. So how do we do that? Let's scroll down to the bottom here where it says query and we'll choose our reviews. And here it is, here is the review that I submitted. Now it's not very beautiful, but I can change that. Let's go ahead and make this full content. I don't need to display comments, so I'll just display the date here. Of course, we can display multiple posts. By default, we have six per page here. You could increase that as high as you like, and you can also have uh, pagination so that people can easily go to the next set of reviews. If you had dozens and dozens of reviews, it's very easy to add that. We'll just go ahead and add in the numbers, previous next, or numbers and previous next buttons that would show up down below the post. Now, I've only got one here, so it's gonna be a little vanilla looking, and I didn't exactly give the most detailed review either. Of course, all of the Elementor styling still works. So I can go up to style, and I could maybe give this a border and add a little padding in. Why don't we add a title here as well? And of course you could continue styling this until it looked exactly as you liked. Let's go ahead and hit update and view this on the front end. All right, here it is. And remember, this is just a post grid of recent posts. If I were to click it, it would actually open up this review in its own separate window where you could have people reply to it. Now you can turn off the commenting if you'd like. So how can we make this page look a little bit more stylish? In fact, you might not even want that previous step where you display the content in line with your form. So to do this, what we're gonna need to do is create a new single post template using Elementor Pro. All right, let's get right to it. Back to the word WordPress dashboard. We'll go under Elementor, Theme Builder, Add New. Choose a post template. We're going to do Single. Under Post Type, choose Review, and we'll give the template a name of User Review. I'll create the template. Now, you could, of course, start from scratch here and design your page out exactly as you like it, but Elementor has a ton of templates, and so for the sake of time, I'm just going to start with one of their templates. I'm going to go under Pages. I'll choose this blog post and insert this. All right, our template is loaded. Now what we need to do is connect it up to our custom post type. This section up here is gonna be my review title. Let's click on that. And then instead of using this title right here, I'm gonna click this dynamic tags option. We'll choose post title. If you had asked for someone's Twitter handle in your form, you could actually link it up to whatever social media you want. You could go ahead and choose the custom tag here. Maybe it's a advanced custom field. You could link that right up. Because I didn't do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this element. In fact, I don't need this text element here either. Either. So let's go ahead and remove that. And we'll get rid of this author photo and this author name here. Now, of course, you'd probably want to display these things, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that. Now, what I am going to do is th use this text field over here to display the user rating. So let's go ahead and click on the pencil icon over here, and we'll go over to the dynamic tags, and we'll slide all the way down until we see the advanced custom fields. And here's where it gets a little bit tricky if you've never used advanced custom fields inside of Elementor, is you actually click on this again. It doesn't look like like you would, there's no uh, kind of user 
prompting that you would click right there. And then we'll go under key and choose our rating. You can see 10 shows up here, but that's not very helpful. So let's go to advanced and afterwards we'll do slash 10. Now I can see I've got a 10 out of 10 rating, at least gives me some context. Before I'll say rating. All right, now it says rating 10 out of 10. Let's center this up. We'll change the weight. I can get rid of these other fields. I'm not going to need them. Now, if you ask someone to upload an image in their form, of course, you can make images dynamic as well. Same process. You would just click on the pencil icon, go over here where it says dynamic tags, and then you can choose the advanced custom field where they uploaded your image to. There's a file upload option right inside of Fluent Forms. Now, what I do need is the actual post content. So for that, I'm just going to choose this widget over here that says post content, drag and drop it right in, and it says Says, hey mom look I'm on the internet all right great so let's go ahead and publish this we will display it under all reviews let's save and close now let's test it out again by entering a second review in I'll add some lorem ipsum this time to give us a little bit more data to work with and I'll submit the form all right I get the message that my form was received let's go ahead and refresh this page and here is the user review now of course you could go ahead and customize this further but you can see that I can display quite a long review right on this page and if I click on it it fills in our template that we set up before. Again, I'm not saying this looks good, but you get the idea the customization is there. I didn't have to create an all new Elementor form for this to be populated with a specific design. We can check the other one as well. And there we go. We have that same template being filled in by that form. All right, so that's gonna do it. I hope you can see that this is a super powerful feature. You no longer require both a designer and a developer every time you wanna do something a little bit more complex on your WordPress website. Now. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to hit me up in the comments down below, but I'll admit I am not a developer and you can probably stump me on this one, but you know who will know the answer is the Facebook group. So head on over to the Facebook group if you have questions about this. I am sure someone over there will be able to help you out. And that's gonna do it for this video. I'll see you in the next review.